Welcome. I'm Lee Cowan, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. It's notoriously tough to make it in Hollywood, but actor Hilary Swank struggled even after her Academy Award-winning turn in Boys Don't Cry. And she told Tracy Smith that despite winning that Oscar for that role, it didn't come with any immediate financial success. Hilary Swank in Boys Don't Cry. Hilary Swank was suddenly a name in Hollywood with the fame, but not the fortune. So. You've called Boys Don't Cry the little movie that could. Mm -hmm. Made it for a little bit of money. You got paid a very little bit of money. $3,000. $3,000. Yes. And so you have an Oscar and no health, health insurance. insurance. Yeah, yeah. At that time, you had to make 5000 a year to have health insurance, and, and I didn't. Later in the show, Hillary Swank says she's not as serious as she looks. Do you think people perceive you as more serious than you Absolutely. are? Absolutely. My mom said I should win an Academy Award for tricking everyone into thinking I'm a dramatic actress. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And I also get emotional, like I said just now, like I'll just like get emotional about something and and it looks very serious, but um, and there is definitely a serious side to me. Then from Hollywood A-lister Hilary Swank to one of the most famous artists you've never heard of. Connor Knighton caught up with Michael Dees, whose work has been commissioned for 25 U.S. postage stamps, sending his oil paintings all over the country. Dees doesn't choose who's getting the stamp treatment. A citizens committee makes recommendations to the postmaster general, then an art director assigns the work. Over nearly three decades, Dees has been asked to paint everyone from U.S. presidents to Hollywood stars. In the early 1990s, Dees had his own brush with Hollywood when Columbia Pictures commissioned him to redesign its logo. What's it like to see that on the screen? It's a kick. <laughs> it's, it's fun to see. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. Actor Hilary Swank grew up in a trailer park that some in her hometown thought was the wrong side of the tracks, even going so far as to tell their children not to go over and play with her. Well, today, the two-time Oscar winner isn't afraid to stand up to those same people who now say they always believed in her. Here's Tracy Smith. In the most scenic corner of the Pacific Northwest, Hillary Swank is in her element. Do you have lots of memories walking around here? Yes. So this lake right here is uh, what I considered my best friend because I spent every single sunny day in that lake. These days, the two-time Oscar winner is staying on familiar ground in her life and in her work. Hi, Sharon. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to come by and give you this. I just made dinner if you want to stay. Love to. Her new film, Ordinary Angels, is the true story of a woman who moves mountains to help a little girl who needs a liver transplant. Thank you for helping save this girl! To the point of begging the hospital to erase the mounting medical debt. You're asking us to reduce the family's medical bills due to hardship. No, I'm asking you to erase them, all of them. Was that funny? For Swank, whose own father was a transplant recipient, the story hits painfully close to home. My dad passed away October 1st, 2021, and he had a lung transplant. And just shortly after he passed, I mean, I started filming five months later. Um, and so it was like almost, I don't know, kismet in a way to be a part of it. Some bills are like wine. They get better with age. The movie is about a woman who tries to do the impossible and keeps trying until it happens. The same could be said of Hilary Swank herself. Raised in Bellingham, Washington, she grew up on the proverbial wrong side of town, and some kids at her school were told not to hang out with the kid from the trailer park. That would happen? Oh, yeah. Because you lived in a trailer park? Yeah. They, I don't know. They didn't want their kids playing with me. I don't know. I know. It's stupid. It's so silly. But it stayed with you? Well, it stayed with me um, because, obviously, I didn't understand it, but it's interesting because some of those um, people now being back in the hometown are like, oh, I always believed in you. Oh, that, really? Yeah. I'm like, no, you didn't. I can't keep my mouth shut to that. Do you say something? 
I say, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah. And how do they that They don't remember. Is Ben Stever here? And it seems she never forgot how tough it was to make it. For years, she took any part, no matter how small. Hi, Luke. You might recognize another young actor here, Leonardo DiCaprio, who was on his way up, too. It happened, but it was nine years of really hitting the pavement and really, I mean, auditioning five times a day and in the trunk of my car was all these different outfits that I would change and go in to, to be this different person in, in these auditions and, you know, so. And a lot of rejection too, I would imagine. A lot of rejection. You know, it's a really hard thing to be told all the time, you know, oh, about your looks and, and why you might not have gotten this or that. and you start to think, oh, do I need to change that about myself? And I think that was one of the reasons why I, I didn't realize consciously I was doing it, but I think I was looking for um, roles that weren't about appearance, that they were really about people. And that turned out to be the key. Who are you? In 1999, she landed a role that changed everything, Boys Don't Cry, playing a real-life trans teenager. You, you gotta see shrinks, you gotta shoot hormones up your button. I mean, it costs a fortune. I'm gonna be, you know, an old man by the time I get that kind of money. And the Oscar goes to... And then, this happened. Hilary Swank in Boys Don't Cry. Hilary Swank was suddenly a name in Hollywood, with the fame but not the fortune. So you've called Boys Don't Cry the little movie that could. Mm -hmm. Made it for a little bit of money. You got paid a very little bit of money. $3,000. $3,000. Yes. And so you have an Oscar and no health, health insurance. insurance? Yeah. yeah. At that time, you had to make 5000 a year to have health insurance. And, and I, didn't, I didn't recognize that until I went in to try and get a prescription filled. And, they were like, that'll be $260. And I was like, oh, I don't think I need that prescription. <laughs> no. <badly." laughs> Weren't you ever tempted to just whip out the Oscar and be like, but I have this? <laughs> no. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that would get me what I needed. Get in. Seems she's had to fight for everything she's ever had. In the role of a boxer for Million Dollar Baby, Director and co-star Clint Eastwood had her bulk up her tiny frame with a brutal training routine and more food than she'd ever eaten before. Million Dollar Baby, mm -hmm. how many egg whites did you eat a day? Uh, six zero. Six D? Yeah. How? I drank them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. The movie also beefed up her reputation as a Hollywood heavyweight. Hillary Swank, Million Dollar Baby. After her second Oscar, she continued to work. But in 2014, she put her career on hold to care for her father, recovering from a lung transplant. You took care of your dad for three years? Yeah, it ended up being a little bit more, but I took three years off from my career. I know a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, how can you take that much time off of your career? Aren't you worried about, I'm like, worried about what? I'm only worried about my dad's health, you know, to think, that, I don't know, your career could go away or something is, was the least of my concerns. The absolute last thing. But it was just so, it was such a great time and we became even closer, obviously, and he's one of my favorite people in the whole world and I just um, miss him every day and I would have only regretted not being there. Sadly, her dad didn't get to meet his grandchildren. Swank and husband Philip Schneider welcomed boy-girl twins. She was a few months shy of her 49th birthday. And they just turned 10 months old and I've been with them every single day. Every day. Yeah. We are going to save this girl, you hear me? We're gonna need a lot of shovels. In case you couldn't tell from the title, Ordinary Angels is about how average folks can sometimes do miraculous things. Just look at the career of its star, and it's tough to disagree. Do you believe in miracles? That's a good question. So much of that, I think, is rooted in the fact that I loved it so much, but I also said, I'm going to go and do this, and I didn't question it. I never said, and if it doesn't work out, I'll do this, this, or this. There was no backup plan. No. I just never said I wasn't going to do it.
you know, so can't was like a bad four letter word in my house. And so if that is a miraculous thing, then yes, I believe in miracles. Up next, an exclusive excerpt from Tracy Smith's chat with Hillary Swank, something you can only see right here on Here Comes the Sun. Stay with us. My dad really just wanted me to be happy. As promised, here's more from Tracy Smith's interview with Hillary Swank. You didn't have a lot of money growing up. Does that still sit with you today? Does it still affect you in certain ways today? Um, it's a really good question. It made me, my, well, both my parents had really strong work ethics and they were both thoughtful about how money was spent because they had to be. And so that is a big part of my makeup to this day. You know, I'm not gonna be frivolous with my money and I'm really thoughtful about how I spend it. And of course, like anyone else, like if I need to buy, we were just talking about our dishwasher that was beeping a second ago. If I need to buy a new dishwasher, I'm gonna do my research and I'm gonna find a dishwasher that's on sale. You know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be um, thoughtful like that. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the understanding of how um, a dollar is earned and how a dollar is spent. That's something that, you know, it's hard earned and um, and I have an understanding of how uh, how our hard earned it is, you know, from, from those humble beginnings. Um, and so I definitely appreciate that. You knew pretty early on what you wanted to do for a living, what your calling yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. And I think what's remarkable is that your parents supported you yeah. in a huge way. Yeah. They absolutely did. You know, when we were talking about just my childhood and that we're now in my hometown um, that I spend part of my, I've spent a lot of my time actually, I've been here the last year and a half um, after finding out that I was pregnant and filming in Vancouver, um, just like just right across the border here. So it was just easy to be here and commute, but I had a really great teacher wrote to my mom and I think a report card and said, you know, really, and I mean, it was to my parents, but my mom was like understood really at a deep level what he was saying and was like, want, you know, he said, I think you should really nurture this and encourage it. She loves it. And so I auditioned for the school play that year and um, and then started doing local repertory theater and then went down to Seattle and started doing more um, auditioning for stuff down there as well. But they, they were um, huge supporters and my dad really just wanted me to be happy and, and it didn't you know, he didn't make the truck down to truck down to California with us. Yeah, it's enormous. And now I look back at, at the time, I just thought, well, yeah, this is what we're going to do, right? This is what we do. Um, but I don't think I realized that that's not what most people do. <laughs> yeah. Pick up and move from here, drive from here to Hollywood. Yeah. It's remarkable. Not no, I mean, not having a place to go. No, mm -mm. we knew, um, um, we knew a family that were moving out of their house and they said uh, the house was completely empty and they said that we could stay in it um, at night and then just roll up air mattresses and put them away um, so that they could show the house. And um, so we would do that um, for a while and just um, kind of living out of our car for a, a little bit until my mom was able to uh, get a job and we were able to um, rent a room from a single mom in Burbank. Yeah. I mean, that's that's having faith in your daughter's dream and supporting your daughter's dream. Isn't it? Do you think people perceive you as more serious than you Absolutely. are? Absolutely. My mom said I should win an Academy Award for tricking everyone into thinking I'm a dramatic actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And I also get emotional, like I said just now, like I'll just like get emotional about something and and it looks very serious, but, um, and there is definitely a serious side to me, but I was definitely, a, I'm pretty silly. And, um, and I started my career out in comedy. Um, and I think I, I remember, um, I auditioned for a, uh, dr dramatic series. Um, and the studio that always had hired me was for sitcoms. And they said, but you're, you're, you're a, what was his words? I said it before. Um, a 30 minute, a half hour? You're, 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 yeah, you're a sitcom. Like you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're two, like two half hour, something like that. Um, I love that it's been so long ago that it's hard to recall, but um, that might also be my, my post-pregnancy brain. Um, 
But um, yeah, it's uh, it was that was an interesting moment. Isn't that funny? You were too sitcom. Yeah, too half hour. That's what he said. Too half hour. It wasn't even sitcom. It was too half hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was that same year that I won my Academy Award. You showed them. <laughs> I got Boys Don't Cry instead of that drama. Instead of wow. I think yeah yeah. Isn't it funny how life works that way? Yep. You call your twins your angel babies. Mm -hmm. Why do you call them your angel babies? Well, aren't all babies just angels? I mean, they just are. They're just angelic beings who just bring so much joy to every day. There's no, there's no ulterior motive. It's just wake up and here I am and here's the day and they're seeing new things every day and you're seeing all the, and you've heard this all before. I mean, we see life again through their eyes, right? And so we get to experience it all over and the beauty of it all. Um, and I think for me, being a parent who is on the older side, the beauty in it for me has been that I had the opportunity to dive deep into this dream of being an actor and now I can dive deep into this dream of being a mom because I'm not pulled in any other direction. I can just be with them. Up next, a stamp of approval. Welcome back. You probably recognize the famous faces that artist Michael Dees paints for U.S. postage stamps. It's unlikely, though, that you recognize his face. Connor Knighton visited Dees at his New Orleans home studio. Inside his home studio in New Orleans, artist Michael Dees can spend months working on a single oil painting. But collectors need only spend a few cents to own a print of his most popular works. His portraits sell for pennies, 32, 37, sometimes 41. I have a friend who likes to call me the most famous artist you've never heard of. <laughs> Dees has created 25 stamps for the U.S. Postal Service. He's not allowed to sign the paintings, which means he may not be a household name. But his subjects are certainly well known. He's responsible for an impressive gallery of American icons. When you do a stamp, you're supposed to represent that person at the high point of their life. Dees doesn't choose who's getting the stamp treatment. A citizens committee makes recommendations to the postmaster general, then an art director assigns the work. Over nearly three decades, Dees has been asked to paint everyone from U.S. presidents to Hollywood stars. In the early 1990s, Dees had his own brush with Hollywood when Columbia Pictures commissioned him to redesign its logo. What's it like to see that on the screen? It's a kick. <laughs> it's, it's fun to see. Do you sort of nudge who's ever beside you at the theater? And say, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Despite persistent rumors to the contrary, the Columbia Torch Lady is not Annette Benning. Dee's used New Orleans graphic artist Jenny Joseph to model for his oil painting. I think I would have remembered <laughs> if Annette Benning had posed for me. While Dee's typically works off photographs, occasionally he's had to do a bit of posing himself. I had to paint a portrait of Benjamin Franklin for the cover of Time magazine, and I was having trouble working from the existing portraits of him, so I ultimately ended up using myself as a model, because unfortunately, uh, I share the same hairline um, as <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. Dees has painted six time covers, primarily presidents. He did magician David Blaine's autobiography, but he keeps coming back to stamps. Is it lucrative? No, <laughs> definitely not. And that's why I do it, is because it feels like an honor. I've been asked to do something. Um, I, I consider it a privilege. The first stamp Dee's ever painted was of author and fellow New Orleans resident Tennessee Williams. In addition to depicting the man himself, Dee's wanted to pay tribute to Williams' most famous work. If you look at that stamp very closely, in the background there's a streetcar. And if you look at it with a magnifying glass, there's a single individual sitting on the streetcar. And that's meant to represent Blanche Dubois, who's the heroine of Streetcar Named Desire. Dee's most recent stamp, this portrait of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, was released last fall. Current regulations stipulate that an individual must be dead for at least three years before they can be honored with a stamp. When is a stamp not just a stamp? When it's the one you've been waiting for. Fans of Marilyn Monroe waited decades for her to finally get the stamp treatment in 1995. Dee says his portrait of her remains the best-selling stamp he's ever created. 
I draw everything out um, in pencil, black and white first. These days, Dees is devoting more time to his personal work, focusing more on an overall scene than on a specific person. I've spent 40 years painting a lot of images that other people wanted, and now it's time to paint images for myself. But he's still accepting stamp commissions. He's currently working on three top secret stamps that will come out in 2026. For Dees, the stamps are a way to go beyond the gallery and get miniature works of art into as many hands as possible. You think about the journey that that painting takes? Often, yes. I try to make every stamp as beautiful as I can because I think a good stamp, you will notice it. It is not strictly a functional item. If it's done well, it's a little beautiful note on the outside of the envelope and it can really sort of brighten the thing and, and become something beautiful. I'm thrilled to do them. I'm Lee Cowan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right here next time on Here Comes the Sun.